Joining us, as he always does on Tuesdays, is the great Ben Burgess. He's author of Give Them an Argument, Logic for the Left. He also teaches logic and philosophy at Perimeter College in Atlanta. And he is a proprietor of a great Patreon page, of which I am a patron. Ben Burgess, are you ready for your song, Professor Wolf? You might want to put on your headphones. Or no, no, no worries. Don't put on your headphones. We're going to just blare this on the speakers. Uh, Professor Burgess, are you ready for your song, sir? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's go. I want to go to mockery really bad. I that, will. So please go. <laughs> okay. Because you got to restrain me. Debunk all of it. Logical analysis. You're going to show us how to argue. This is based on data from a bunch of different countries. There's abundant evidence that uh, at this point uh, that that's bullshit. Breaking down these right wing arguments and looking at how they're supposed to fit together. Okay, break it down. 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 Ben, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Ben, I, I, I've been absolutely enraged and despairing over this coup in Bolivia. Uh, I, it's very important to always remind people that Evo Morales has significantly cut poverty. And actually, apropos of some of what we've been talking about on mic, I th off mic, I think he's he's made some moves in a redistributive direction that are significant and is also, and one of the reasons I think he survived for a relatively long period of time, he managed the economy quite well, including according to the Financial Times. Now, as countless well, nerds remind me on, uh, on, <laughs> on Twitter, Evo Morales was not a heavenly perfected vehicle of gurudom who never committed any mistakes. Oh, and okay, so therefore, so undoubtedly, uh, he probably deserves this. I also would just like to say, and I mean this seriously, Ben, I'll get to you in a second. There were some people who suggested that part of the reason that he was removed in this uh, literal coup, which we're going to see some uh, uh, footage of, this is actually good footage. This is of supporters of the government and indigenous rights waving flags uh, saying now's the time for a civil war, which is an incredible tragedy, but this, there has just been a coup. Um, some people are actually saying that the uh, right-wing junta uh, that are burning indigenous people's flags and just planted a Bible at the presidential palace and have been burning and looting and threatening members of Evo Morales' family, that the reason that this happened is because they're really upset with his policies in the Amazon. <laughs> and I just would like to say for those people, I doubt you're watching this on the post game, but we probably will clip this later. If you believe that, Totally fascinating point, and I would like to recommend, I have some real estate opportunities I'd like to tell you about. I have some penny stock opportunities I'd like to tell you about. Uh, I'm making a film that I'd like you to invest in. I have a demo tape that I think if you could put the right investment behind, I could be the top of the charts. Literally anything that I could sell you, I would. Could I introduce, could I uh, also uh, any, uh, David and I just recently inaugurated a multi-level marketing scheme. So <laughs> if you believe that the right-wing anti-indigenous opposition, almost certainly backed by the CIA and embraced by the Trump administration, fomenting a coup against Evo Morales was doing it because they were tired of the extraction <laughs> economy, I would love to talk literally any type of business opportunity with you that involved <laughs> you sharing your money with me. Yeah. Uh, yes. So Ben, uh, you're going to debunk some of these profoundly obnoxious, disgusting defenses of this coup. And you're going to use a great piece in the Jacobin called a few tips on how to understand American coups by the scholar, Greg Grandin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would I would also, as far as what you know may have caused this, um, I would gently nudge the portion of the people who think stuff like that who are capable of thinking uh, to think about uh, lithium instead. Right. Uh, that uh, that this is uh, this is to uh, electric cars. Uh, as you know, Guatemalan bananas were to the United Fruit Company. Uh, uh, a tremendous uh, portion of the world's reserves of lithium seem to be in Bolivia. Um, Evo Morales just said that he wasn't going to allow private extraction, was going to keep that in public hands. Uh, he also, something else that just happened is he just won an election. 
Uh, and this is a this is a really important point because uh, the Organization of American States asserted without evidence that uh, you know irregularities you know corrupted the election to the point where the result is worthless. Uh, there's a um, statistical analysis uh, from um, the uh, from the CEPR uh, think tank uh, that uh, that suggests that that's not true that uh, that they, that in fact it looks like statistical analysis of election returns. This the Center for Economic and Policy Research uh, does not bear out this claim. So we have a government that was just democratically. Just to be really clear, I want to just we we got to be tight. I'm sorry, but just to interject, this report is put out by Mark Ricebrot and Guillermo Long, who will be a guest on next week, who's a, a former Ecuadorian foreign minister, and basically. To simplify it, they say that there is a, a mechanism that the OAS recommends that the Bolivians agreed to that is a pre-official vote tabulator. That, by the way, that tabulator, uh, Evo still won in that. It just was close enough that it would go to a runoff. Right. The official vote came in and the full official vote that was not reflected in the non-official tabulation included rural areas and areas significant to the Evo Morales base, pushing him up to 47%, which incidentally, 47% and losing seats in Congress is not exactly a let's rig this thing kind of result. <laughs> right. So it is it is very analogous to Shama Sawant winning her election. The first results were that she was behind. And I was, I was depressed, I thought she lost. And people around said, no, 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 no. Actually, her campaign is optimistic because this tally is not in her strongholds, not in the votes that she's expecting. And this loss margin that we have so far is close enough to push her over the top. And indeed, that's what happened. It's quite analogous to what happened in Bolivia. And the OAS that sounds so official, who have you know, said elections in Haiti are illegitimate after the U.S. has demanded they do it, um, that's what they're hanging their hat on. They don't have a bunch of examples. They don't have like we have photographs of burned ballots or anything like that. That's what they have. And every single newspaper and mainstream media in the United States has uncritically repeated that. And I'm sorry to prolong this, the segment and interrupt, but I, I just think this is really important to be clear about. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, and the reason this is important is because there are all these people out here there you know, you've probably, if you've been off on, you know, Twitter and stuff, you probably run into a few today uh, who say, no, 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 it's not really a military coup. You know, like, really, this is so complicated that this doesn't count as a real, true, official, according to Hoyle, military coup. Uh, and, and the first and most important point to be made about this, and this gets down to a question of what, you know, we could be all nerdy and call conceptual analysis, right? What's the, we've got a disputed definition here, military coup. What's the best definition? The definition that I'm working with, I think you're working with, I think most reasonable people are working with, is that if a democratically elected government is overthrown by the military, that would be a military coup. Pretty simple. But... There are all these people who say, no, 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 but look at all these bad things that Evo Morales has done. As you just admitted earlier, you know, he's he's not, in fact, uh, uh, a, a perfect uh, chief executive, uh, which is the standard for being allowed to stay in office after you win an election. Uh, <laughs> Particularly if you're governing a country in the periphery that is a subject to U.S. aggression and oligarchic extremism. That's when you really better be perfect. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right. Uh, so so here's – and, you know, I mean, it's obviously – you know, you can think about all the obvious hmm, – I wonder if, like, if there was a military coup in the United States or England or France, you know, would people be splitting quite these same hairs about exactly what the definition was? But uh, if nothing else – Military coups having happened a lot in the last 65 years, you know, since our bends uh, in Latin America, if you want to argue about the definition, you said, no, 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 this isn't really a military coup like those other military coups because of X, Y, and Z. As Grandin points out in this great article, and he's knee deep in this stuff, he wrote a book on Kissinger, uh, he's very good on these topics, uh, and so Grandin points out, says – 
you know, the one, there has never been a coup in Latin America where the president being overthrown wasn't in some way or another problematic. Yes, even Allende. Two, there has never been a coup in Latin America that didn't have some degree of popular support. And just to underline this, I think if we imagine circumstances in which that could actually be a military coup in the United States, socialist government, that sort of thing, it's not hard to imagine a big chunk of the population supporting the coup. That's not That doesn't stretch the imagination any. Uh, three, if the military intervenes – uh, after the government go, uh, the president agrees to uh, protest demands, it's a coup. In fact, pretty much any time the military intervenes to change regimes, that's a coup. Four, the main driver of destabilization need not be the CIA or international capital for the outcome of the coup to benefit them. In other words, it's not enough to say, oh, there's some – there's 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 legit – there's you know, homegrown, domestic, organic – opposition to the government that has nothing to do with the CIA or international capital, because guess what? That's going to be true in every case. These are complicated societies. Uh, right. Also, if you believe that members of the Latin American right or oligarchy care about judicial independence and democracy, I'd like to reiterate my <laughs> real estate offer. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, well, we we I think we've seen in the last couple of years uh, just how much they care uh, about uh, proper judicial process, uh, with uh, you know, in the case of Lula da Silva in in, in Brazil, you know, which right. which uh, people watching this may have heard of. Uh, so that that is a that is quite a turnaround that they're suddenly so concerned with this. Um, finally, just to skip uh, skip to the last one. Uh, and I think this is an incredibly important point, and Grandin puts this so well that I'm not going to try to improve on it. I'm just going to read out this last point. When assessing comparable negatives of the contending sides vying for power, always a good exercise when you want to virtue signal your nuanced position, distinct from evil rightists and ideological leftists, don't forget to weigh the future in your deliberations. For instance, a few years ago in Brazil, a number of leftists pointed out that the Workers' Party, PT, was indeed corrupt and cut off from its base. Now, as we hurtle towards the climate apocalypse and see the nature of Bolsonaro, perhaps we decide a few more points to the PT side of that conflict. Indeed. I mean, I, I even I would quibble with some of that description, but that's exactly it. Professor Wolf, do you have anything to add? No, it's just... <clears throat> you. You don't need to have a debate about how much is local and how much. The CIA knows that in each of these countries, there's a highly concentrated core of very wealthy people who have spent 200 years accumulating their wealth, buying the professionals to protect them, whether it's lawyers or accountants, and, and working with the church often to have a base in the society. They understand all of this, and they're ready to work with the United States to help them keep the control that they have had for a long time. So they'll always be partners for the United States inside, typically also controlling media and so on, so that they can make it look, excuse me, that they have a bigger base than they actually do, because they're doing that all the time. And, and so... We shouldn't be having a debate how much is the United States right. involved. First of all, we'll never know because all this stuff is done in secret. And number two, it doesn't really matter. They would have done a coup without the United States if they could get away with it. Probably they couldn't, and so they needed help from the United States. They got that help. You know, that, that's and, the way this is done. And, well, and, go back to the Emmanuel Wallerstein piece that I did recently. I mean, this is this is I mean, this is centers and peripheries, and this is the parasitic relationship. Exactly. Between the local elites and the global hegemon. And the bottom line is, is lithium access for <laughs> outside uh, foreign direct investors. And I, I mean, you know, and, and just the amount of just there, there is a certain a number of people who really confuse just being in their heads for intellectualism. I don't care if he had a fucking referendum to seek a fourth term. The Supreme Court signed off on it, incidentally, and the guy won. And what you're about to see, and a lot of people are embarrassing themselves because you already see it. I mean, 48 hours ago or even 24 hours ago, like, I don't know, there's a lot of people upset and the official opposition isn't very right wing. And now you see these people are 
they dragged the mayor out of her house. They put her in body paint, sheared her hair off. They're burning people's homes. They're ripping up indigenous flags. They're appearing in masks and ripping people out of parliament. All of that nice stuff about the Amazon and extraction and human rights, that's for you gullible fucking morons. That's not what they're doing. No, and Burgess. And, and what, and you know, just one last thing about yes. this. All this great Greg Grandin stuff we've been going over and a really essential article is about the history of these coups going back to Arbenz and Allende. Uh, but you don't have to go that far back. Yep. 2009, there was a coup in Honduras. And I remember all these, oh, that's not a real coup. It's not, you know, yep. it doesn't, I, I check all the boxes arguments in 2009 about Honduras. In fact, that is a slightly better argument then because in Honduras, at least the army got a court to agree with them. Uh, but, you know, but it's the same basic shape of the argument. And it's like, no, 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 this isn't a coup because uh, Zelaya did things that constitutionally overstepped. He did this, that, and the other thing. So it's not really a coup, even though the elected government is being overthrown by the military. And check out the history of the last 10 years uh, in Honduras. Do some Google searches for Honduras and search terms like death squads and disappear journalists. Uh, and, you know, if you keep think, you know, if you think that a military coup against the elected government, uh, no matter what your criticisms are of Evo Morales, if you think this is going to lead to anything good, you're like one of these people who three years after the invasion of Iraq was clamoring to invade Iran. Exactly. Um, ben Burgess, as always, we appreciate you. And for those of you still clamoring to delusions about Evo Morales, again, we all have business propositions for you. Ben Burgess, <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.